Hey, welcome to another video. So today we're gonna work out a little bit the legs, the lower body, and a little bit the upper body. Um, it's not necessarily an easy workout, but I think it's a good workout for almost everyone, including beginners. You might have to scale accordingly, but um, yeah, it's just a good little workout. And it also um, emphasizes uh, working unilateral, so working one side at a time, at least for the uh, lower body. The upper body is a little bit different, but that's pretty much it. So we'll get right into it. It's not gonna be a follow along video. I'm just gonna explain the exercises and the ways you can scale it and how you're gonna do this, All right? And you can find the exercise in the description below. So first is gonna be a single leg deadlift. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna stay tall, you're gonna pull your back leg and you're gonna feel like the torso is leaning forward. So you're gonna lean forward, bend your knees slightly and you're gonna use your hands to track your knee. So again, I'm gonna go down, keep my chest up, pull with my back leg, bend my standing knee, and again. So it's gonna be about six to eight of these. So if I face forward, I'm gonna bounce on one leg, pull my back leg up, keep my chest up, slide down, my arms stay long, and my shoulders stay down. And I'm using my leg to track, if you want, you can hold a water bottle or something. That helps as well. So it's going to be six to eight on one leg and then six to eight on the other leg. And the main thing is don't reach with the back or with your torso. So don't do this. This is a common mistake. Stay tall from the head to the heel. Pull the back leg and you're going to feel like the torso is dropping, but maintain the chest up. Chest up, chest up, chest up. Okay. So for example, I have my logo here. Even though my chest is dropping, my logo is still visible from the front. Okay, very important. And my, again, my stance leg is a little bit bent. Otherwise, if I'm straight, I'm not gonna have as much balance. So I just wanna bend the knee a bit, but my knee stays more or less above my ankle. Okay? That's the first exercise. So you do about six to eight, one side, then six to eight on the other side. Um, you can take about a 15 second break between the two. There's no rush, it's not a cardio workout. You're not supposed to be sweating or gasping for air. Next up is gonna be a single leg squat. Okay, so you're gonna take like maybe a bench, a chair, uh, a step, whatever you got. You're gonna sit down, you're gonna pull one leg as close as it goes, lift the other leg up so it can be straight. You can even brace yourself to keep it up. And then you're gonna stand up. Okay. Then place both feet down, sit back down, and again, come up. When you're starting now, the best advice I could give you is just lean a little bit forward. Okay, so lean forward, use your arms to kind of balance yourself and stand up. If you're having a hard time, you can uh, grab a higher surface or, for example, if you're using a chair, you can stack a few books on it. Okay, so as you get better, you can remove the books, but at first, it's going to help you to more or less uh, scale the movement appropriately. So it's going to be the same thing, six to eight reps per side. So you do six to eight on one side, take a little break, six to eight reps on the other side. Um, it should be 100% success rate. So what I mean by that is you're not losing balance, you're not shifting. It's gonna take time to get used to, but uh, don't be afraid to take a higher surface for this exercise. Uh, same thing for the single leg deadlifts. Try to reach for the knee, but if you can't reach for the knee consistently and you always lose your balance, don't reach so low, maybe mid thigh, get used to the movement, and then as you get better at that, you can uh, increase the range. Next one is moving Cossack. So you can move all this out of the way. <laughs> moving Cossack. So what I want is tall chest, shoulders back and down. Your arms are under, so about hip width apart. You're gonna step out to the side, so like a decently big step. Uh, usually the bigger the better. You're gonna shift to the side. So what you wanna do is get your si same sided arm, so right leg, right arm, to reach your leg and then descend. It's fine if you lean forward, go down as low as you can, and then come back, step back in. Okay. Same thing. You can take two steps if you need to. Chest up, long arms, reach down. Okay. So I'm sliding inside of my leg as a reference point, and I'm trying to go as low as I can from there. Okay. Once you're done, same thing on the other side. You can do this one alternate. So if you want, you can center yourself. One side, come up. Other side, come up. So if you do alternate, it's 12 to 16 reps in total. If you do it uh, per side, it's uh, same thing, six to eight. 
uh, per leg, you can take a little break and then you do the other side. So if you want, you can cycle, you can do like a circuit or you can do each exercise individually for about three to four sets. There's no rushing. You're taking about a minute or two to regain your focus. Ideally, you're just kind of walking around, drinking some water, don't touch your phone. Uh, try not to get distracted. So again, just regaining your focus, rehydrating yourself, recentering yourself, and you go for a following set. You can do it in a circuit, that's fine. Just don't rush between the exercises and take a longer break once you finish one set of the circuit. So that's for the legs or the lower body, if you can say. Next is gonna be upper body. Okay, it's gonna be simple, not too much. It's mostly pushing, there's no pulling because I'm assuming you won't have access to a pull-up bar or uh, like uh, any structure or trees or anything of that sort. So it's just gonna be pushing, you need to work your pulling, just keep that in mind. So if you like this routine, don't go too excessive on it because you're gonna develop an imbalance because this is, again, purely pushing. Okay, so first one is scapular push, uh, scapular push, yeah. So you're gonna keep your arms straight, very important. Just arms are straight, no bending. Even a little bit bent is not ideal. So you're gonna pinch your shoulder blades and then push and round your back. Pinch your shoulder blades and then push around your back. So from the side view, it's almost like I'm doing this. Notice the uh, lower back does not change position. So I'm not doing a cat and a cow. I'm keeping my core tight and I'm pinching my shoulder blades together. You can make this harder if you want. You can come up on the toes, keep your knees off the ground. So you can have your knees underneath your hips like this, or you can even do it in a plank if you're strong enough. The main thing again is shoulders back and down, arms are straight, you're squeezing your mid-back, like you're trying to squeeze a pencil in between your back and hold it there. So that's gonna be 10 to 12. You can rest a little bit if you need to. If you're doing it on your knees, you can go right away into the next one, which is the arm twist. I call it the arm twist, it's a simpler name. So your fingers are spread, very important. Even for the scapular push-ups, that fingers are spread, it creates more space within the form. If your hand is collapsed, it's not gonna be as conducive in your practice. So, Fingers are spread. You're gonna keep your arms straight up once again, like a, a scapular push-up, pushing down. And you're gonna twist the crease of the elbow forward and then release. Main thing is when you release, you're not bending your arms. So you're staying tall and you're rotating. Okay. So from the side, it looks like this. So scapular push-ups, 10 to 12, and then 10 to 12 with this. And again, notice my upper back is slightly rounded, so I'm not excessively, but just a little bit pushing your weight. My arms are straight, my core is tight. If I want, I can come on my knees, or if I, that's good, I can come into my plan, uh, planche, plank. Um, so if you want to make it a little bit harder, like I said, just lengthen yourself, or you can make it nice and easy, just do it on your knees. It's a great, great exercise. Uh, next is going to be down dog into a push-up. You can do the push-ups on your knees, that is fine. For the down dog, so what I want to see is your chest to your shoulders, your heels are pushed down, your arms are straight. Don't arch, don't arch. So keep your core tight or slightly hollow. Press into it, and then you're gonna come into a push-up. You can do the push-ups on your knees, like I mentioned, or on your toes, and come back, reset. Be careful when you come into a plank, or at the end of your down dog, do not let your hips sag. This is a plank, okay? So then again, I can do it on my knees or on my toes, do my push-up, come back, reset, and go again. If you can't reach the ground, even if you're doing kneeling push-ups, what you can do is take a towel, just fold it up into multiple layers or multiple folds. And the same thing, so you're gonna land your chest on the towel and push up. And as you get better, you can just kind of reduce the number of folds and make it a little bit harder. So this is gonna be five to seven. And then one last thing is just the McKenzie uh, push-up or back extension. And so you're gonna be laying on the ground your hips on the ground, always in contact with the ground. Shoulders back and down. And you're gonna push and ideally exhale at the same time. So get ready, take a big breath, and then. And this end. Okay. Again. So it's gonna be five to seven reps. If it's too much, you can do it on your elbows. What I mean by that is you can do this. But the main thing is to keep the shoulders back and down. So if you're shrugging and your arms are fully straight, there's no point to that. Just relax your shoulders back and down. Notice you won't have to go up as high and you'll get a way better position. So 
just like the legs, you can do this in circuit, meaning you can do scapular push-ups, arm twist, then you can do down dog into a push-up, and then you can finish with the McKenzie press. Or if you want, you can do all those exercises separately um, and taking about a minute or two in between your sets. Um, again, there's no rush. The goal here is not to sweat. The goal here is not to uh, be gasping for air. It's just to get good muscle activation and good connection with the body and find balance on your legs. And that's pretty much it. Hope that helps. See you soon.